everyone. One day, Napoleon was asked by one of his generals, What was the happiest day of your life? He wondered if it would be his early triumph over the Italian army, or, as a young general of only 26, resting Lombardy from the Austrians. The emperor looked thoughtful. Ah, he said, the happiest day of my life was the day I made my first Holy Communion. I was near to God then. Now you will notice from the scriptures that a lot of the sightings of the risen Jesus occurred in the context of a meal and today's gospel is no exception. There is a clear reference to the Eucharist here. Last Sunday Jesus said to Thomas, Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. Well, at Mass we don't see Jesus in the flesh but we believe that he is present with us under the appearance of bread and wine, and he speaks to us through the scriptures. You often hear people say these days, I believe in God, but I don't believe in the church. Well, without the church there is no Mass, there is no Eucharist. It is primarily through the Mass that we come close to our Lord. Why keep him at a distance anyway if he is our friend? Jesus would have remained more or less a stranger to the Emmaus disciples if they hadn't invited him in to dine. Remember what the reading says. He made as if to go on, but they pressed him to stay with them that evening. If we neglect the Mass, our nearness to the risen Lord cannot be presumed. Another important aspect of the Gospel today is that Jesus explained the scriptures to the two disciples. That surely refers to the first part of the Mass when we spend time listening to God's word. They said, the disciples on the road to Emmaus that is, did not our hearts burn within us when he talked to us? Now we could ask ourselves a question here. Do we ever feel the Lord is speaking to us personally through the readings? or something the priest or the deacon says in the homily. Now the meaning of the word Mass is derived from the Latin word Missa, which means dismissal. Like the Emmaus disciples, we are sent out from the Mass like men and women on a mission. The disciples were full of joy after seeing Jesus. They set out immediately to tell their story of what had happened to them on the road to Emmaus and how they had recognised Jesus at the breaking of bread. The body of Jesus was broken on the cross, we all know, out of love for us, to redeem us, to save us. As bread is broken in the Eucharist, our mission in this world is is that our lives will be broken in love for others, particularly those whom we've been sent to serve. Recognising Jesus in the breaking of bread should also lead us to recognise him in the brokenness of people's lives and respond to their needs. After all, we will be judged on how we treat others. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you made me welcome, etc. Initially, the two Emmaus disciples were downcast, if you remember. But through their encounter with the risen Lord, their faith actually is restored. The Mass will build up our faith as well and make us fit for service. Now, here are a few questions for you to consider. First, there used to be a time if we missed Mass on Sundays or holidays through our own fault, we would not go to Holy Communion until we'd been to confession first. People seem to be less concerned about this these days. Why do you think that is? Second, attending Mass brings us closer to Christ. Do you think that the opposite is also true? Third, what is the best way, in your opinion, to attract young people back to Mass? Last, 
I believe in God, but not the church, is often heard these days. How should we, as practicing Catholics, answer people who are of this frame of mind? Interesting questions, aren't they? Thank you all now for listening, and God bless you all. Oh.